Welcome back, Kai, for another week, um, week nine of the season. Yep. Uh, getting ready, conference starts now. Uh, thoughts, just uh, looking forward. Yeah, we're done with the, the first leg of, of the season. Ended up 6-3-3, three, and three, which isn't bad. We'll take that. Um, not too excited with just six wins, but to have three losses in 12 games, um, I think isn't bad for the growth of this program. Um, with the tie versus Cal, uh, you know, I think that's a good way to lead into the season. 12 non-conference games, first half you started off 6-0, and 3-3 and the last half of the season. Um, and then to get the, the positive result against Cal uh, after a couple of losses there. What does it mean to get that result against Cal after having that little tough stretch there? Yeah, I mean, the tough stretch, like everyone in the country, everyone has injuries. We had a couple injuries, and uh, I think we did a very good job during that time period of missing key players of not going out and going on a seven-game losing streak. Uh, you know, we lost a couple of games, but I think we held held solid and kind of got through it in, in one of the best ways we can, with, you know, with people having to learn and step up in those positions, which I think will help us in conference because now those kids are ready to play many minutes. Um, but to go in, you know, at 0-3-2 and in the six, five games leading up to, to Cal and go down 0-2, by halftime, you know, that's every reason for a group to give up. And I think we kind of just rolled up our sleeves, kept playing, stayed true to ourselves. Uh, we're not a program that changes formations or style of play. It's it's keep plugging away, do what we're supposed to do, take what's given to us. And I think we did it. And, and literally we executed two set pieces to perfection. Speaking of the Cal game, you know, you, like you said, you got down 2-0 in that first half. And then to come back in the second half, I mean, it was team effort by everybody to, to pull that game out. Just now that you've had a chance to to think about that game and sleep on it a couple of days now, just your thoughts on how gritty that performance was from that team in that game. Yeah, I mean, the first 20 minutes is, is jitters. Uh, our kids kind of, or are we are we allowed to play with Cal? Should we let Cal have the ball? What should we do? And then it was like a puncher, a, a boxer. I mean, we got knocked in the face twice, and we, I think we kind of settled down and said, Oh, we can play in this game, and, and we can play. And we didn't resort into freaking out after that. I, I think we played better after the two goals. Um, and then every kid stepped up. Tessa coming off the bench, giving 10, 15, 20 minutes, quality minutes. Emma giving eight, nine minutes. Uh, Carney giving seven. Even those small minutes, it, it, the small little things, you know, get you success. And I mean, to roll up your sleeves and play a team of that caliber, I mean, that probably has 13, 14 kids of probably worn a national team uniform at some point mm -hmm. you know I think we have won with, with Shevlin uh, I think it was, it was unbelievable the effort and the crowd and the energy in the crowd and you can tell you know the the crowd was cheering for us especially because we were at home uh, but we also had chances to win it as they did in overtime and we kept going there's a I would say there's a 40 minute stretch where we put them on the back foot and, and really went after them which was exciting to see which you know when you play Pepperdine and USF and Portland and LMU that you know it's a game you can call back upon in the game you got a penalty kick first first one for you guys this year what goes into a coaching philosophy per se on picking a kid to take that penalty kick in that type of a situation well first the kid who's kicked it in the goal the most in practice uh and then second the kid who wants it i mean shevlin was probably our backup last year to men's taking pks and i think men's was three for three or two for two last year so i mean shevlin has been picked as our pk taker two months ago um it wasn't even we didn't even say anything when it was time she she walked up and put it where she was supposed to be and you know, I think the PK was well deserved. Uh, we went back and looked. There's a chance we should have had one in the first half on Jordan's free kick, where it hits the the wall in the hand and one bounces to the keeper. Mm -hmm. But we're over that. Um, and I think the build up to the the second or the the PK was a brilliant build up. I think it was six passes, seven passes without them touching the ball. Compost post well, good turn. I, I mean, we produced the chance, which which every coach can can live with that and. And then, you know, everyone got to the right spots on the PK if there was a miss, and, but Shevlin buried it. You know, we've talked about this a little bit. You've had 12 players score goals this year. 14 players have produced a point for this team. That's kind of odd in, in a <laughs> soccer season. Um, I mean, then that truly speaks towards this is truly a team effort yep. this year. Um, just thoughts on that, and, and, I mean, is that something you, you look for um, out of a team to, to disperse the scoring like that? I know we talked about that earlier this season with, it's not going to be one player like it yep. was a year ago. Um, but is that, you know, you've coached soccer a long time now. 
<laughs> Do you see that a lot? No, you don't. I mean, most teams have one or two kids that are above 10 goals each. And, you know, but, but what's nice about what we have, I think it goes to one of our team philosophies of 11 players attack and 11 players defend. Both goals came this weekend from two center backs. Um, we've had goals from outside backs, D mids, strikers have scored, outside backs have gotten assists. You know, I'm sure Sarah Peters has probably kicked one far that maybe could have gotten an assist. So I think it, it goes to the fact that all 11 players have the ability to score and push to get goals, which is great when you're looking for a goal and you know your center backs and your outside backs and your strikers can all find a way to score, um, which you know makes it hard to defend when when you have to worry about every kid on the field. It'd be nice to have a 25-goal All-American score, but I think the next best thing is have a bunch of kids know how to score. All right, now that the pass is behind us, big part of the season coming up now, uh, last seven games all against West Coast Conference opponents. Um, kind of just looking forward, What what is the expectation for the next seven games? Yeah, the expectation is finish middle of the pack of the WCC, uh, always win, win your rivalry games. A wise old coach once told me, uh, athletic directors like non-conference, they care about conference, because those are the people they have to meet with every year. You know, we're the same way. I think we did our a decent job in non-conference. This is what matters. You know, you do the non-conference to build with us. Um, we're taking it one game at a time, the old cliche. USF is the most important thing on our mind. We're not looking at Santa Clara, Santa... San Diego, Portland, we don't care about those games right now. We'll care about them five minutes after USF. But right now it's a single focus on a team that beat us last year, um, on them being opportunistic and one of our mistakes in overtime. Uh, so that is by far the only focus we have. Speaking of USF, first game, they come into this game 4-9 uh, overall. They've uh, lost their last seven games and being shut out in six of those seven games. So they're definitely going to come in hungry, ready to play. What does USF uh, look like um, heading into the game on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, it should be a fun game. Both coaches have scouted each other, scouted teams. We probably recruited half the same players, or, or maybe not. Um, so I think it's going to be, you know, one of those old, old, you know, Ohio State, Michigan football matches. So all the records go out, go out the books. Uh, no one cares what's happened in the last 10 games. He probably gave the same speech to his kids yesterday that I gave to mine. No one cares about your non-league. Everyone's zero, zero, and zero, and, and let's play. So I expect two teams that will be well scouted against each other, two teams that will be well prepared, and I expect both teams to give everything they possibly have. Where I think that's going to give satisfaction to the team who wins because they're going to have to beat someone who's giving everything. Last year USF was, you know, a first game in conference last year, just like it is this year. Um, they got us. Two to one at their place in overtime last year, as you you talked about. How much does that carry over? Since that was your first conference game last year, how much does that carry over to this year? Oh, it's a bad taste. I probably have thought about it every day since that day. Uh, I mean, you never want to lose to USF, Santa Clara, or Cal. I mean, we're not hiding from that that comment. That's that's the way it works at St. Mary's. So, I mean, I've thought about it all the time. We remind our kids about it all the time. Um, that that is not an acceptable result. It, you know, so we have to do everything we can for the result. The, the good part about the WCC is when you get the conference, the results matter. You know, in non-conference, we, we played hard and well versus Washington, and we grew as a team. That's fair enough. No one cares if you play hard and well, grow as a team, and lose in conference. So, you know, yes, we have to play well and do what we're supposed to do, but in the end, if we play awful and win 3-1, I'm throwing a party. So uh, I, the results, all that matters, um, the quality um, on the field, which produces the results and the preparation leading up because you're playing a bunch of teams that know each other, that understand each other, that have coached against each other. So, I mean, it, it's the best time of the year. Kai, good luck on Sunday, and uh, I'm sure the people will be watching. Thanks. Go Gales.